so for today's example, the uh, research question, uh, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, it's supposed to say, is there a difference in the annual sales revenue of product A, product B, and product C? We start with our dependent variable, which is sales revenue, which is on a scale. And then our independent variables, or groups, or factors, we have three separate products, A, B, and C. When we go ahead and launch uh, SPSS, we go to, to run the one-way NOVA. We use the drop-down menu at Analyze, come down to Compare Means, which opens up a sidebar menu, and then we select one-way NOVA. We get a new box that opens up in the center, and I know it's a little bit small. I probably should have enlarged that. Um, in the dependent list, we're going to move across the uh, variable uh, in this particular data set. It's called revenue, which is a scale. And then for the factor or groups, um, the variable name is actually product number. We're going to select post talk from the, the post talk radio button. And then we'll get a new window that opens up. And we're going to select the, the two case, which is in the middle column there. And then we'll click continue. Now we're going to select the Options button, and we'll select Descriptive Statistics, because I think it's always useful to have the descriptive statistics. It's always good to be able to look at that to make sure you, it gives you an idea of what's going on with your data set, because some data sets are rather large. I think this one is as well. Uh, we're going to select the Homogeneity of Variance Test, and then we're going to click Continue. And of course, if you wanted to select other options, um, go ahead and do that when you run your one-way NOVA. Um, if you're looking for something different. But for this example, we'll keep it rather simple. Now, SPSS, of course, as you're probably all familiar, puts out a lot of tables. The first one that I want to look at is the descriptive descriptives table. And since the um, variable of interest is titled revenue, it actually says revenue above the table. So if you're running uh, one-way ANOVA and you have different dependent variables that you're all that you're trying to run at the same time. Um, for instance, I'm running just revenue alone, but if you were looking at uh, one for revenue and then one also for, say, gross profit or units of sale, then you could run, you could move those across into the dependent variable, still running the same uh, factors or, or same three groups, and you get multiple tables, and each one will be titled with the related or the appropriate um, variable. And this one just happens to be revenue. so. We can actually see that for product A, we've got a sample size of 401. For product B, we've got a sample size of 396. And for product C, we've got a sample size of 203. So the nice thing about running the ANOVA is you don't have to have equal sample sizes. You can run it with um, various sample sizes like we have in, in this example. And then, of course, we get the mean for each in terms of revenue. We get a standard deviation um, for the mean. Uh, we get stand, I'm sorry, we get standard deviation for the sample, the standard error of the mean. We get the 95% confidence interval of the mean in itself, so you can actually see. Um, and then we also get the minimum and maximum for uh, each of the revenues of each, of each product. So that's, that's nice as well. <clears throat> the homogeneity of um, variances also is titled with the revenue for this particular example. So we have our Levine statistic, and then we get the degrees of freedom, um, the lower end and the higher. And then we, what we're looking at is the SIG value. And the Levine's test actually applies the, the null hypothesis that all uh, variances uh, are equal, and the alternative hypothesis is that all variances are not equal. So it's desirable to have a non-significant result for the Levine's test, so you can retain the null hypothesis that all variances are equal. If the SIG value is statistically significant, then you'll have to take another approach, because that indicates that um, all variances are not equal, which is in a violation of one of the, of the last assumption for the one-way ANOVA. The next test uh, table we get is actually the ANOVA table, and we get the sum of squares for between group, between groups and within groups. Um, we can look at 
between groups because that's what we're interested in. We actually get the F value and we can see that it is significant, that there's a significant result to the ANOVA, meaning that um, all groups are not equal. Uh, the group means are not equal, and so we're going to reject the null hypothesis that the group means are equal. And the next table we get is the the two keys HSA. I'm sorry, it's, it's HSA, which is um, Honest Statistical Analysis. That's what the, the two keys HSA stands for. But this is the post hoc test, which is run after the ANOVA for multiple comparisons. <clears throat> and when we look at the first row for product A, we're looking at product A compared against product B and product C. First against product B, we can see that the mean difference is negative 121.995 essentially. We get the standard error of this mean difference and we can see that it's statistically uh, significant. We get the lower bound and the upper bound of the confidence interval of the difference and we can see that the value of zero is not included which means that we have a statistically significant result, which is reflected back in the SIG value. And then comparing product A to product C, we can see we have something similar. The mean difference is a little bit less. It's a negative 116. Of course, we get the standard error, and it's also statistically significant. And we see the confidence interval of the difference, which is negative 167 to negative 64. In the next column, we look at product B <coughs> and the two keys is comparing product B against product A. And so it's it's pretty much the same as what we've got in the row above where product A is going against product B. It's just a little different mathematically in terms of the signage. But we can see that we've got the same values. It's just that the direction of the difference is just opposite. But it's still a statistically significant result. Um, but when we look at product B compared to product C, now this one's a newer. This is newer for us. We see that the mean difference is only 5.9, standard error is 22, and the sig value is 0.961. So we know that it's not statistically significant, and this is also reflected in the confidence interval of the difference, ranging from negative 45.91 to 57.77. So the value of, of zero is included in the confidence interval of the uh, the mean difference. So we know that um, there is no difference between B and C. And then when we look at product C, we already have run these, or two keys ran these for us earlier, but it compares C against A and C against C against B. And of course the, the numerics, the numbers are the same, it's just the, the sign or the direction is, is different. Um, one thing to note too is at the very bottom of the table, there's a small asterisk and says the mean difference is significant at the 0.05 level. And so that's also important to know that where you're, um, where there is significance. And the mean difference is the third column and you'll see under certain certain values there's a small asterisk. On here, because we only have three products, it's easy to identify. Uh, but if you have a number of products, you know, 20 or 30 products, then it becomes much easier just to focus on those particular values and so it's nice that SPSS does that for us. So how do we write this up? Um, <clears throat> here's an APA style write-up for one-way NOVA. Um, an analysis was conducted to determine if there is a difference in the annual revenue of product A, product B, and product C. The analysis resulted in a statistically significant difference between groups as determined by the one-way NOVA and here we'll put in the F values, you know, two to 997 equaling 26.425 and at the p-value less than 0 0.001. A 2k post hoc revealed that the annual revenue was statistically significant between product A and product B which is negative 121.95 with our confidence interval of negative 164 to negative 79 p-value less than 0 0.001 and also between product A compared to product C which is negative 1 uh, 116 with a confidence interval ranging from negative 167 to negative 160 to 64, p-value less than 0 0.001. There was no statistical significance between the annual revenue of product B and product C, and here we just report the p-value. And so we're looking at providing the information for those 
comparisons which were statistically significant and then we just provide that for the NAW where, where there's no statistical significance we just provide the p-value.